And it feels a little bit like the first day of the rest of my life. Fantasy is done with, and now the fun begins. <laughs> It is Wednesday, January 12th. Wednesday, oh, it's already fucking Wednesday. Woo! I officially made my final 2021 fantasy football video this previous Saturday, so four or five days ago. We went out to celebrate and I stayed out way past my bedtime. I was, I didn't get home till like 4.30, I don't think. I was probably up till like 5.30. I should have a camera in here at all times for content, but more so like for my own safety. Regardless, if you followed me, you know that off season is my favorite time of the year because I get to step back and look at BDGE, the business as a business, right? I get to look at it from a strategy standpoint. Uh, how are we gonna approach the following season? Some financial projections, what we want to invest into. This year has been so wildly different in that perspective than it has been in previous years. I am working on things and inspired by things that I haven't felt this way in a very, very long time. Like in a really, really, really solid spot where things are about to break right for us in a way I can't really explain. So I kind of want to go through my Google calendar of this week just because I've been on like 75 calls and I'm getting on 75 calls. And I think as I go through the list of calls, I will be able to break down what's going on with us more clearly. Like I've always talked about how I focus on long-term strategy and business stuff in the off season. This is the real, this is the first off season that I feel like I'm really, really doing that shit. Like to a scary, degree. As you may or may not have noticed, I haven't put out a video since the Final Fantasy football video. I put out, I did the live stream on Saturday. I think Animal and Snacks put out Bagels and Locks on Sunday, maybe. But there hasn't been any activity on the channel. There has been some other sort of activity on the channel. If you have noticed, the YouTube channel is no longer Nick Ercolano. It is BDGE Media. We are going full focus direction as a business going forward. I was very much against that for a long time. And one of the reasons was that YouTube started as a creative outlet for me. It was a way for me to talk about my hobbies and my passions, which is what led me to doing fantasy football content to begin with. It was what led me to, it was a way for me to express myself and who I was, because I had trouble doing that, I think, as I was growing up and, and when I was younger. And I don't really have that same problem anymore. Um, and I honestly, I have YouTube probably to, to thank for that in not completely, but in a lot of ways. And I never wanted to, I never really wanted to take YouTube that seriously in the sense that like, you know, you've, you've probably heard me say this a lot, but I don't like to put myself in a box ever. And I felt like if I had changed the name to, you know, something fantasy related or something XYZ related, it didn't encapsulate like what the, the feeling and the energy that we're trying to bring to uh, you guys and the people that listen to us and the people that have followed me and, and us for a long time. But as I've, made the decision as most of you probably already know because I've talked about it at fucking nauseum. We are we are actually scaling for the first time this off season. We are getting an office space in New York. We are making full-time hires. We are doing a lot of these, we are bringing on other people that aren't necessarily full-time, but scaling up in a lot of departments and a lot of the fantasy content. So we'll be bringing on, you know, I'll, I'll go through the calls again and that will probably help shore up a lot of things. But we changed the name because listen, if, if we're gonna approach this as a real, business and I'm bringing on real team members that are putting their 100% focus into this, it's no longer about me. It was about me for a long time, right? Like I was the one who created this. I was the one who started this. It was my outlet. It was my expressive creation, right? So I could do whatever the fuck I want with it. And I still can, of course, but if we're, if we're going to go at this in a full scale uh, team way, then, then it's the team, right? It's, it's BDG. It's bigger than me at this point, which is why I started this channel. Uh, the second channel of mine, which is now going to be my other creative outlet. So I started up, right, we we made the change from Nicker Colano to BDGE Media, and I kind of tossed her, I, honestly, I didn't really think about it too much. I would have made it just BDGE, but someone already has that fucking YouTube channel name. It's some weirdo who hasn't uploaded a video in nine years. I'll never be able to get a hold of him. And I could have done like BDGE Fantasy Sports or BDG Sports and Gambling or something like that, but I don't know. BDG Media, I still think, gives us a very, very wide spectrum of paths and avenues we can go for. And I'm not really, really too worried about the name of the channel right now. That's whatever. So we switched Nick Ercolano to BG Media and then I started Nick Ercolano, the secondary channel. As you can see from the banner, on the banner is written in stone, 
I built a successful wholesome ass business by creating content. Now I want to create content that shows people how to build a successful wholesome ass business by creating content. And if you look at the uh, about description of this new channel, pretty much I'll just read it to y'all. Hello world, my name is Nick Ercolano. I am the founder of BDGE Media, youtube.com forward slash BDG Media, a fantasy slash sports media company I started at the ripe age of 22. Seven years have since passed and it's become a half a million dollar a year business entirely thanks to content and some good and atrocious business decisions throughout. Somewhere along the way, my passion shifted from fantasy sports to building BDGE, the business itself, and marketing, media, content creation, and the nuances that, that accompany those things. So after building a successful, wholesome ass business that revolved around creating content relative to my passion, my current passion has transformed into teaching others how to build a successful, wholesome ass business that revolves around creating content relative to their passion. The goal is to turn 50 people with little to no experience in content creation into full-time into full-time content creators over the next two years. Welcome for the newcomers and welcome bike for those returning to the muck. A lot to unpack there. Uh, I won't try to get all sentimental and, and break everything down and all my feelings and thoughts about this in one little sitting, even though I have a feeling I'm gonna be saying I just did that accidentally in about 25 minutes. So it's become very, very apparent to me, and you guys I'm sure have noticed this over the last year, two years, three years, whatever, that fantasy sports and fantasy football will always be a hobby of mine, it will always be a passion of mine, and I'll always have a place for it in my heart because what it's unlocked for me in my life, but it's just not something that drives me anymore. I see that some of these kids on YouTube and I see people on Twitter and I see people all over the place that are straight up just more passionate about it than I am. And that's okay, I'm not like judging myself for that. I could, you know, I that that's completely fine. Like I'm, I'm cool to be where I'm at and uh, it's just not who I am at this point anymore. The problem I do see with that is when other people are really passionate about it, they're willing to work a lot harder because they love doing it. I am not as willing to work as hard because I don't completely love it with my utterly fucking deep soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't, if you're not in love with what you're talking about and what you're doing and what you're researching and what your life revolves around 24 seven, you're gonna burn the fuck out. And that has become extremely apparent to me over the recent years. And again, I'm fine with that. And this is the reason why we are starting to scale up a little bit and outsource more because I can't do it myself anymore. And not that I have been doing it myself up to this point, but in terms of like, scaling content, it had been a lot of me. And now it's kind of coming full circle because I had built a business around my passion of fantasy football, right? It took me a very long time. And I started from nothing, right? Zero subscribers, nothing like that. I was in my mom's fucking house, in my bedroom recording videos. And now I'm restarting over. I have a new passion and I want to teach content creators how to do what I did because, because I fucking did what I did. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people trying to teach people how to build a business, but the only business they built was teaching people how to build the business. Like I built a business around something niche and something I was passionate about and something random and had to learn the steps along the way uh, with zero, zero fucking clue how I was gonna do that. There is a real roadmap for it. It's not easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's very fucking difficult and it's gonna take a long time for a lot of people to do it. But my goal is to teach people how to do it. I don't think it's as difficult as you might think about it as. And that's become my new passion. So it's like, I'm starting back over from where I started when I originally started YouTube, but with a completely new topic, you know? And you had seen me put out different vlogs, and I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do with the vlogs. If I'm gonna keep them on this channel, put them on the other channel. Uh, I did the Behind the Business series, which was something I was passionate about. You know, that was something I, I think you probably saw a different side of me in than the fantasy football stuff, and that's the shit that drives me. So like, those things are gonna start going on to that channel, because I would like to, it's not about me building a brand in that sense. I think I've already built a personal brand around being someone that understands that side of business and marketing, whatever, but that has now become my creative outlet, right? Like that has become my way to express myself, whereas this channel originally was that for me, and now I'm starting back over, and anyone who follows along, the link will be in the description is literally going to be following my sort of step-by-step -step plan but I'm doing it in real time too you know what I'm saying it's like don't follow what I say follow what I'm doing and I'm, I'm literally gonna be doing it all over again there's no goal on that channel other than to teach people uh, I'm not doing it for money I'm not doing it for anything like that I'm not doing it to expand our audience to females I'm not doing it for that for sure 
for sure not doing it for that, for sure. But really, what I said was, you know, my tangible goal is to take 50 people who have something that they're super passionate about and teach them how to monetize that passion correctly, build an audience, build a loyal audience, give value to the audience, and turn that into real, you know, life-changing money. And I'm gonna be honest, I think my goal is probably a little bit aggressive. Uh, go from little to no experience to full-time content creator in two years. I think it'll probably take longer than that for most people. And uh, I have had a lot of people reach out being like, oh, I wanna be one of those 50. This is not like a mentor program. I am hoping the the uh, the goal, right? That's the tangible goal. The intangible goal is to empower those people. It is to teach those people on that channel through my content, through the content I'm putting out on that channel, everything they need to know in order to get to that spot, right? They need to get from point A to point B. I'm not physically dragging you along, but my content should guide you. It is like a roadmap to get there for yourself. So I'm not like working exclusively with 50 people. I'm hoping that the content empowers you both from a mindset, a mental, a software, physical, hardware, you know, camera equipment, the editing software, microphones, lighting, you know, good fucking vibes, mindset, all that kind of stuff. I want to, I really want to show you what it takes to get there. So that's the idea behind that channel. It is my expressive outlet about the thing that I'm passionate about. And I'm gonna build that bitch up and I won't monetize, I've already made this promise. 18 months, there will not be one single piece of anything monetize, monetizing, monetizarily on that motherfucker, all right? There will be no brand sponsorships. You will not see a single YouTube ad on any video I put on that channel. Pre-roll, mid-roll, post-roll, never, ever, well, for 18 months at least. I will not open a private Discord I, that you have to pay to get into. I will not try to sell you a product. I will not, none of that shit is happening on this new channel. Do you know why? Why? One, it's because I really, if you're starting from the, if you're starting from nothing with me there, that needs to be plain and clear. I need to be doing nothing but giving y'all value. I need to be teaching you for 18 months, a year and a half, all right? I don't need to focus on all the other shit because then that makes you guys unfocused. Soon as you bring sales into the relationship, as soon as you try to sell, your relationship to that person becomes different. Uh, it can become untrustworthy if you haven't built up enough trust. When someone tries to sell you too early, you break the trust barrier. It takes a while to build trust with somebody else. It takes a while for someone to get loyal with to you and with you. And it takes a while to build trust with somebody. And if you make the wrong move at the wrong time too quickly, you break that. Even if you were building up, say you gotta go from zero to 100, right? And once you hit 100, you have that person's trust. You could build up from zero to fucking 87. As soon as you do something fucking stupid and clown-like and you break that trust or you try to sell them something, Boom, you're back down to like 10 again and you gotta start that shit over. And that's a lesson for y'all. Like you're, it's crazy because a lot of you guys are gonna, are gonna be passionate about it. You're gonna wanna start this up and say like, I can work hard for the next two and a half years, become a full-time content creator. And then you're gonna be like, how do I monetize? But you're not watching what I'm doing. I'm not gonna monetize for two years because that's the way you fucking monetize online. You monetize by not monetizing, for real. That's fucking facts, okay? The less you try to sell, the more you're gonna sell in the long term. And this content game is the fucking longest of terms, all right? We're talking max fucking contracts where you're not getting paid for two, three years, and then you're getting paid a fuckload of money. That's how we did it at BDG the first time around. That's how we're gonna do it, again, personal branding wise. I have no idea what that's gonna lead to, but I feel like this is the next step in my evolution as a person, I think this will open doors for me in industries and circles and, and, and things that I have always seen myself in, right? Like I listen to a lot of high-end business people or people that have built personal brands to the nth fucking degree or people, you know, just people that are successful. And a lot of the times I'm just, I, I just feel as if I can do what they're doing as good if not better and I wanna be able to share that with people. And I know that shit takes a long, 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 long time. It's a long road to be able to scale it and impact the amount of people that I want to, to impact. So that will be like my personal project and I'm gonna treat that as if I did when I started BDGE. When I was working full time and I worked on BDGE during my lunch breaks from 6 p.m. until 10 p.m., sometimes till 2 a.m., that's how I'll be working on this personal brand. So, while all of my focus will remain on BDGE and building that side of the business, I need to start outsourcing some of that content so I can work on content that I'm personally passionate about. I'm literally doing the same thing I did for the last seven years, 
starting from zero again. Well, not zero, I think we have like 700 subs on the channel already, which is pretty fucking cool, but isn't that crazy how like, you could actually boil it down to a number. You start with all the other, these other numbers. I've been building BDG for, I don't know, six years now. We've got up to like 63, 64,000 subscribers, done countless videos, thousand if not more videos. And you could really boil your impact down to when you start like a new project, you know? Like that is my passion project and you wanna know how many people really, really fuck with you down to the core is like that number when you start everything all over again. And it's humbling, but it's super fucking exciting. Like I, I tweeted this, I, I tweeted about this man and like, it's very scary starting over. Uh, I, I don't wanna make it sound like this is a sure thing, like I'm gonna do this uh, with no fucking hiccups and this is gonna scale perfectly and everything's gonna work out. I'm fucking, I'm very, very nervous about starting this new channel and this new like endeavor in my personal life. What if it doesn't work? What if I'm not as good as I as I thought I was? What if um, what if I can't teach people to become full time content creators? What if I've what if I'm a one trick pony and I've only learned one way to do this and that's not like the correct way or that doesn't work for most people and I don't know there's a lot of things in marketing and business that I don't know right like I don't know fucking anything about SEO I'm not a fucking graphic designer I don't know how to code well I'm not great at Microsoft Excel I'm not like there's a million things that I'm not good at I don't even know the fucking buttons on the video camera to work this shit to make it look good I hope it looks good I pay a lot of money for lenses and cameras and put it in 4k so that hopefully this comes out well I don't know what the fuck I'm doing really and that scares me a little bit because I can't just start making videos and be like, ah, I actually don't know what the fuck I'm doing and expect people to care, you know? There's a lot I'm nervous about, for real. But I know that I have a lot to share and I have a lot of value to give and I've invested every part of me, every ounce of who I am as a person into building what I have up to this point in my life and I'm gonna share every fucking lesson I've learned and I think it'll help people grow and I think it'll help those people that, you know, you gotta wanna help yourself first of all, man. There's gonna be a lot of people that come into it with the wrong mindset and they'll they'll be the people that drop out first they'll be the fucking flops no doubt i'm expecting that to be 95 percent of people everybody likes to talk the talk ain't nobody want to walk the walk because the walk is long as fuck you know it's a double marathon it's long it's hard your shoe's gonna break your lace is gonna get tangled you're gonna run out of water for a while it's gonna be cold at night it's gonna be hot during the day it ain't all fucking fun and games I would argue none of it's fun and games. I've been I've been diving into a lot of different content creators on YouTube, trying to gain inspiration because it's funny, you know, the, the first time around when I built BDGE, I just straight up did it on my terms, right? I was like, I don't give a fuck about a camera. I don't give a shit about audio and lighting and like making sure that the keywords and the thumbnails and all this shit was on point. I was like, I'm just gonna do what I know how to do and do it the best I possibly can and stuck to just giving value and quality content, and that worked. And the more I'm looking at things for this new channel, the more I'm like, I should probably do this right. I should probably do this correctly. Like, learn everything there is to know about YouTube analytics, which I don't fucking use ever, right? And it would probably help me if I did. Uh, understand how to plot an actual storyline throughout vlogs rather than just sitting down and talking to you guys, which I don't even know if this is valuable at all, right? It's just, I, again, this is an expressive, a creative outlet for me to get things off my chest and put it out into the world. But people who are really good at vlogging have a storyline in their vlogs, right? There's a problem, there's the action, there's a solution at the end. There's a lot of stuff that actually goes into content creation that I never bothered to learn about and it's what I'm kind of diving into right now. So that's a lot of what I've been working on. Now, that entire thing, again, is completely aside from BDGE. I still have to run this business, which leads me to the office space. Now, we were originally supposed to have it signed to move in February 1. I pushed it back to March 1 because the COVID cases are spiking in New York and they have been for the last bunch of weeks. It makes me a little bit nervous because I think back like, okay, two years ago, right? Had we rented out an office space two years ago right before COVID hit and then it hit and we weren't allowed to go into the office, that would have absolutely murdered us. That would have killed us financially, right? I don't know where we'd be at this point. So I'm trying to take a safe approach to this because there's a few different angles to this. The COVID cases are spiking. We have multiple full-time employees coming from New Jersey. I don't know if there's going to be some sort of like, I don't think there's gonna be a lockdown. I, I, I don't imagine that would happen at this point. We're like way past that and it'll kill all the businesses and Omicron's like really not that serious, not, you know, death deadly or whatever. It's just very contagious. I just don't know if they're gonna make some sort of law where like 
you know, private offices can close. Like what if, what if the owner of the office building that we're in is like very, very, very progressive. And he's just like, we're shutting the building down because I'm not contributing to the COVID cause. You never fucking know, right? These are all things that have to run through your mind as a practical business person. I don't know if he wants to shut down the building because he's a private office. I don't know if like they make some sort of intrastate laws where it's like we're shutting down public transportation intrastate for a month to make sure it doesn't spread like what if there's a new variant that kicks off in new jersey and then everyone and, and then in new york they're like you can't you can't travel from new jersey to new york until we figure it out more you know like there's a lot of fucking things going through my mind that i'm a little bit nervous about and i want to wait a few more weeks if not a few more months to know exactly where we stand before i sign off on this fucking lease i also need to find a lawyer for the lease then I need to figure out, then I need to write up employment contracts, which I've never done before. I need to figure out how to run payroll, like real salary payroll with taxes included. I need to figure out, we actually have to open up a third fucking business. We, were, we have three businesses open right now. We shouldn't, we should only have one, but we have three. We started off as BDGE LLC in New York. Taxes are insane in New York for businesses. So we opened up a secondary business in New Jersey, BDGE Media LLC, because business taxes in New Jersey are a lot, well, a little bit more lenient than in New York. So we started making all our money through New Jersey. So we started operating out of New Jersey for tax purposes. Now that we're getting an office in New York, we have to operate out of New York, of course, because we'll be there full time and you can't really fake that shit. However, however, I wanted to give our company, BDGE, a finite number of shares, stocks, right? Because I've been looking into taking on investment money for a while back in the beginning of the year, September, October, we decided against it. We're gonna bootstrap the rest of the way. But, you know, if I wanna give the early employees equity in the company by way of shares, you have to be a corporation. You cannot be an LLC. Now, as an LLC, you can do revenue sharing but that doesn't help the business. That's just more money into the pockets of anyone that you decide to give a portion of the company to. If you wanna give equity to a company, uh, to people in the company, you have to be a corporation. New Jersey and New York have these laws where you're not allowed to transform from an LLC into a corporation. You either need to start a corporation and merge the two companies, or you just need to start a corporation by itself and there you go, you have the corporation with shares. So we had to do that and start a third, a third company, which is now our first corporation, in New York and I'm not worried about tax purposes in New York right I said they were way worse in New York but since we are investing so much back into the business this year I don't know if we're gonna be profitable therefore if you're not profitable you don't really have to pay taxes because all your business expenses are about what you'd be making revenue wise so I'm dealing with that shit I also have to figure out if I do give equity away to people how the fuck do I do that I think there's a software called Carta which is where I've actually gotten equity from other companies before so I have to sign up for that so we've got payroll we've got I have to start a new business bank account I have to get new business credit cards and that's gives me you know, the option, like, do I shut the other two businesses down? Do I shut all my credit cards down and fucking probably lose credit? And like, it's all this nonsense going on right now. Which will now lead me to my call log, which will help me organize what the fuck I'm talking about right now. So the first call I got on this week was with the realtor for the office space. So I kind of gave you guys an update on the office space already. Tentative launch date of March 1 for the office space. Second call was with my rep at Chase Bank. We were discussing my options with the new company and the new business account, so we're good with that. Third call was with, I just had a meeting with our developer, so fuck yeah. So we had been looking a long time for a full stack developer. The search went on for a few weeks and I didn't really find any qualified candidates that I thought fit exactly what we were looking for. And then, out of the fucking blue, I got an email from a kid named Chris. I guess he's not really a kid, he's like my age. Um, kid named Chris. I don't know why I just said kid, kid again. I'll try to not give any you know, personal information away, but he lives in the area so he could work with us at the office space. He's very, very good at what he does. We met the first time, so we've met three times over the last month or so. We met the first time just to kinda, I wanted to get to know him first, right? Like, can he work with us? What's he about? What's he like as a person, right? Just kinda get coffee and sit down and get to know each other a little bit. The second time we met to give him more of an overview of what we're doing as a company, how I see him contributing and him letting me know a little bit more about his capabilities, what he could do technically, and uh, and whether or not like both sides of the parties were interested in moving forward with like a real deal between us. And he had a 
we'll say uh, lucrative job before this one. Uh, he ended up moving to New York after he left his last job. So he's been chilling. He's not really like too concerned about getting a new job, but he had been following our channel for a few years. Interested in fantasy football, very good coder, uh, knows the back end of everything. And, um, and those types of jobs typically cost a lot of money to hire. So he gave me a ballpark idea of, you know, what he was looking for. And I said, okay, like, I think you can do the job. I'm okay investing in, into, the, into you uh, to see where this goes. However, I don't actually know how good you are at it, right? Like I can't be the one to judge that because that's not what I do. So I don't feel comfortable signing off anything, paying you anything until we see that. So yesterday, the third time we met, he put together a demo over the last couple of weeks of a new um, website slash database for us. And it fucking blew me away. It, it truly blew me the fuck away. What we're gonna be able to offer you guys as a product this year, from both a membership standpoint, but the, the rookie draft guide, the season long draft guide, I feel like for the last couple of years, I've been going through the, I've been putting a lot of work into it. I've been going through the motions, but it's been hard for me to improve the product because I just don't have the technical capabilities to do it. He fucking does, and holy shit. What we're gonna be able to bring to you guys as a product is gonna blow your fucking mind. It blew my fucking mind, and all he did was put together a skeleton of it in like two weeks. The stuff that we're gonna be able to do for you guys, uh, dude, I'm so fucking excited. Um, so we found a web developer, and it's gonna be gnarly. It's gonna be gnarly, and now I have to think through like contractually, right? For one, I have to figure out how to even write up employment contracts that like are legal, that make sense, that like cover all the bases, which I've never done before. So that's a whole new fucking learning process and experience for me. But then also have like the negotiations, right? Like these are all, these employees are all like people. Like they want a certain amount of compensation. They want a certain amount of salary or equity or X, Y, Z. And then as a business owner, you also have to think of all these other things like, you know, if Animal and Ike are coming in from New Jersey, obviously we're gonna cover their travel expenses. These are all things you don't really think about until you need to think about. And like a year long pass from NJ Transit is probably another, you know, 1200 to 1500 bucks in terms of like an unlimited pass. And then for Tony, like the sub, the unlimited subway pass. And all these things are just like crazy and add up. And just like the lawyer for the commercial spot, right? The office we want to get, like not only do you need to find the place, you need to negotiate a good deal. You need to find a broker that will negotiate on your half. Then you need to have a lawyer look over the contract before you sign off on it. You've got to pay that lawyer probably like two, three, four thousand dollars if they know what they're doing. Case in point, I'm going broke as fuck this year. We're going broke as freak, which leads me to my next call. I'm getting on a call. We're trying to lock up our partnership deals now. We are, actually, I can't really go into details about any of this shit. I'll just say I'm hoping in the next month or two that every dollar of expense that we have for 2022, my salary, the dev salary, Animal, Ike, Tony salary, the office space, software, monthly software expenses, um, any monthly office expenses. I mean, we're gonna need to decorate the office, which I'm already budgeting in as like fucking 20 to $25,000. I'm hoping in the next month, two months, we have contracts in place that will completely pay for every dime of that. I've been saving up a lot of money. We've made a lot of money over the last few years. I've invested most of that into my personal life. All of that is now going to the business. So I have a pretty nice chunk of change that'll cover all expenses for, you know, at least a few months. But I'm exploring a lot of partnership opportunities right now that will hope, hopefully cover those expenses. Those are things I need to, you know, it's getting on calls with reps and then the owners of the businesses and then looking over the proposals and negotiating. So that's another 42 things on top of what I'm doing. After the partnership call today, getting on a call with a content creator who I think is really, really good at what he does. I wanna bring on anywhere from one to three new dynasty content creators and anywhere from one to two new season long content creators. You know, on top of all of this, all this shit I'm like complaining about and you're probably at this point like, shut the fuck up, Nick, if you're still watching this. Everything I'm doing is secondary to me putting out quality content on this channel. Understand that like your life fucking depends on it if you wanna be a content creator. Your entire life, your entire livelihood, your entire business, everything about you revolves around making high ass quality content. So I know the off season hits and yeah, I wanna chill, right? I want to relax for a few weeks. I wanna relax for a month or two, find inspiration, get my creative juices going so that I can go full force for the next you know, 11 months or so. But I understand that y'all don't wait for shit. 
The world does not wait for anybody and the way to continue making an impact on the world is to continue to make content, make quality content. So I'm gonna be still making as much, if not more content next year than I did this year. We're just gonna have a lot more people contributing to the pots. I want there to be content on BDGE every single day, if not twice a day. I want y'all that are in Dynasty and, and rookie drafts and Dynasty leagues and startups or whatever to have a quality, consumable piece of content every single day. And then on top of that, we're gonna have vlogs. We'll be doing tons of like short form, fun videos, probably bring Animal's House into the uh, into the BDGE stratosphere, but we're, we're condensing everything that we do, the Fade the Public channel, the Bunk Bed Breakdowns channel is all coming into BDGE media as a whole. So Mike's uh, Market Watch Monday is gonna be on BDGE. These new Dynasty content creators, their content will be on BDGE. And I have to, you know, while I'm doing this, I also have to introduce y'all as the audience to these new content creators. So I'll be doing content with them, as I like slowly kind of, it's almost like a little bit of crack, right? Like I give you all the crack rock and then I gotta wean you off of it a little bit. I'm the crack rock in this situation. I've gotta introduce you to cocaine, right? And be like, cocaine's better than crack, people. Trust me, he's better than I am at doing this shit. So fall in love with him, all right? Waste your money on him. What else do we got? Um, so we just got a whole lot of gang shit going on here. And yeah, like this is, this is like really, really me in my bag. No, like this is me uh, really operating as like a real operator, not just a content creator anymore and really scaling this thing. And uh, and this is what I fucking love, man. Like this is what I've always imagined myself doing and now I'm really finally doing it. And this is the part about business that I love, man. This is the part about building that I love. It's like even some dumb shit as small as like figuring out how to write an employment contract. Like how do I, uh, you know, that shit is, is is like juice to me, man. That shit fills me up and energizes me. It's just another thing I'm learning. Like I wanna make sure I learn every fucking aspect of building a business that I possibly can. So by the time I teach people how to build a real fucking business, I'm not full of shit. Like I know every ounce of it. I know every cut of the fucking steak so that I can feed you with grilled asparagus, seasoned to perfection. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's the shit that drives me, man. This shit is fun. Yeah, dude. So I gotta go get on those calls. It's gonna be a nutty, nutty, nutty 2022. I hope you guys set your fucking sights high. Super, super fucking high. I wanna leave you with a, yeah, I tweeted something out yesterday that was, you know, a little, a little, a little deep every time, every once in a while I fuck around and give you a piece of my big fucking brain. The inspiration from it was actually from a video I saw on Instagram. That was an interview with Joey Badass, one of my favorite rappers. Where you are now is just a reflection of your past thoughts, your past thinking. So if you want to change your future, you got to change your thoughts now and then put them into action ultimately. Where you are now is just a reflection of your past thoughts. Like that shit was, I don't know why, you know, sometimes videos hit, sometimes they don't, sometimes quotes hit, and sometimes you just kind of scroll by them and they don't. But for some reason that, like really, really triggered something in me and not in a bad way. The word trigger, that, that probably is not the right word to use there, but like where you are now is just a reflection of your past thoughts and your act, and your past thoughts and, and, and the way you had thought about yourself up to that point. Like where I am right now is a reflection of the thoughts I had when I was 22 and 23. You know what I mean? Like you have these thoughts when you're younger and then you either act towards them and become those thoughts or you don't. You know, and what I tweeted out was like, where you are now is just a reflection of your past thoughts and your past thinking, which is what Joey Badass said. And then I added like, every thought you've had up to this point has made you exactly who you are today, right? It's not, it's not something like super introspective, but you've got to understand that like, the way you think is like what you've become. You know what I'm saying? So it's like who you are in two years from now will be an exact reflection of the thoughts you have between right now, this moment and two years from now. Because your thoughts are what dictate your actions. You know what I'm saying? Like you think about something, you're saying, okay, I'm gonna do that. So if you can understand that in two years from now, you're gonna be the exact collection of what you think from now to two years. You might think about things a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? It's like you've got the ability to change your entire life by changing your actions and your thoughts right now for the next two years. And you could be an entirely different fucking person, man. And that felt so strong to me. Cause I'm like, where I wanna go in two years, what I wanna be in three, five years from now is gonna be exactly what I think about myself for the next three to five years. Like you have that power, you have that option. 
and you have that choice to become exactly who you wanna be. So I invite y'all to come on that journey with me. Uh, if you're interested in the new YouTube channel, it'll be linked in the description down below. I love you. If you made it this far, fucking incredible. Leave a comment letting me know that you did and uh, I might just fucking send you a selfie back with me crying because I'm so happy that you did so. I'm out. Goodbye. <laughs>